on board offline. Today we have a gameplay of my favorite nemesis monster in Kingdom Death Monster. This is the Manhunter. I think this one is often overlooked, maybe because he looks so much like the survivors. He looks basically like a human, but he provides some of the biggest challenges I've ever faced. I have never even, I don't believe I've ever made it to the level two Manhunter. I think I've only beaten level one once. I've fought him at least a half dozen times. Uh, he is rough. And it's just some, some really fantastic cards that he brings to the table, AI cards, trait cards. We're gonna go through all that stuff here shortly. Before we get down to the game topper and start showing you the Manhunter, I do want to mention our sponsor, Board Game Co. This is a fantastic website where you can buy, sell, and trade games. I have a great selection to choose from if you're just looking to build out your collection, just trying to you know, get more games in there, you, you have some holes in your collection you're trying to fill, Board Game Co. can help you out. One of the ways they have such a great selection is they have a thriving used game market over there, both uh, buying games from people and trading games with people. So if you have games you just want to get off your hands, you're not looking to to replace it with anything sell some games to board game code they make it very very easy to use um, they, you know they can buy a bunch of games from you all at once check them out see what they're looking to buy and maybe you can find a match there but of course they also trade if you have a board game geek username you can then take your uh, your board game geek username assuming that you've built a trade list over there which a lot of us have and then you drop it into the board game co website they will then compare your trade list with their stock in their warehouse and build a custom trade list right there on their website it makes it very easy to facilitate a trade board game co makes it easy to buy sell and trade your way into a better collection if you do check them out click on the link in the description below so they know i sent you over there all right without anything else we're going to get right down to the game topper and i'm going to show you the manhunter the hanged man suddenly the mutilated body of a fellow survivor hangs in the center of the settlement their life snuffed out and put on display in a horrific fashion your ears become flush with a dull ring and panic and fear creep into your mind as you struggle to comprehend what just happened a tall, grim stranger stands before you, with eyes deeper and blacker than any you've seen. In his hand, a lantern with a distorted face emits a piercing light and a deep reverberation that fills the folds in your brain. With slow, soundless steps, the stranger advances. You call out in fright, but find you cannot speak. The only sounds that can be heard within the light of the bizarre lantern are those emanating from it. Outside of the light, no one notices the stranger. They talk in shocked and frightened tones around the hanging corpse unaware of the danger lurking behind them. Within this soundless reverberating pocket of light, you bear witness to something even more frightening than the events leading up to this moment. Nominate a survivor to get a deranged expression. The deranged survivor stands limp, their face staring blankly at the ground and the faces in the ground staring blankly back at them. Sensing something amiss, the grim stranger stops its approach just inches from the deranged survivor. You can't hear it, but you can feel it. A confident laughter that splits the deranged survivor's face nearly in half. You are filled with a desperate wonder as you watch them find something terrible and dark deep within themselves. Transformed by the intensity of the situation, the deranged survivor's expression is forever changed. You are unsure whether to feel afraid of them or envious. The deranged survivor gains the abyssal sadist fighting art and leads the settlement into battle. All right, so here we go. We've got the setup for the Manhunter. You can see that we've got the Manhunter right in the center of the table. Each of my four survivors are surrounding him. Uh, two of them, the red survivor here at the bottom. Uh, by the way, I've got the, the colors next to them. Uh, I'm going to keep those colors out to make it a little easier on the video for you to see exactly where they are. But the red survivor and the gray survivor are standing on top of acanthus plants. And then obviously we have the six stone columns out there as well. The acanthus plants were chosen at random. The stone columns are always part of the Manhunter showdown. So real quick, we're going to run through exactly what the survivors have for their gear grids and anything else, any other traits, that sort of thing. The red survivor is Coddle. Now this is my uh, kind of support survivor. They're going to have the rawhide headband. They're going to have a full rawhide set. So that's the rawhide headband, uh, which has the ability that uh, you can use an action to reveal the top two AI cards and then place them back on top of the deck in any order. 
He's got the Rawhide Vest, which adds one evasion. The Rawhide Gloves, which provide plus one survival upon departure. The Rawhide Pants, the Rawhide Boots, which uh, provide plus one survival upon departure. And then the Bandages, which allow him to remove up to two bleeding tokens from himself or an adjacent survivor, which, if I remember correctly, it's been over a year since I fought the Manhunter, but if I remember correctly, there's a lot of bleeding that goes on during this fight. The Rawhide Armor. Uh, adds an additional, when I have the, the full set like this, there's an additional one armor to all hit locations. And anytime I perform a survival action, I roll 1d10 on a result of 6+, plus, gain one survival. So that's cool. Coddle also has the Fighting Art Defender. When a survivor adjacent to them is knocked down, they may spend one survival. If they do, they stand and gain plus one survival. So to be clear, when the, the knocked down survivor may spend one... Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. When a survivor... Adjacent to you is knocked down. You may spend one survival. Excuse me. If you do, they stand and gain plus one survival from your words of encouragement. And this cannot be used if they have a broken jaw. So basically, it's kind of a way to encourage the person and um, transplant one survival over to them as well. Uh, that's everything for Coddle. Let's we'll see. He also has two strength and two evasion and then three armor across the board. And he's currently starting with five survival and zero insanity. That zero insanity might end up being a bit of a problem for us. We'll see. All right, moving on to the gray survivor, which is Duala. Uh, that's the other one standing on the Acanthus plant. Duala has a full set of rawhide armor, so we won't run through that whole thing again. And then also a bone dagger. With the Bone Dagger, it's three speed, seven plus strength, or I'm sorry, seven plus accuracy and one strength. On a perfect hit, gain plus one survival. Uh, so perfect hits, of course, are when you roll a 10, when you're rolling to hit, not when you're rolling to wound. Um, she has then uh, three armor across the board, uh, one strength and two evasion. And she has the Fighting Art Cross Arm Block. Whenever you are hit, after hit locations are rolled, you may change one result to the arm's hit location. Moving on, our green survivor is Ellen. Uh, now, oh, I'm sorry, Duala, by the way, has five survival, zero insanity. Um, I think all of these have, well, no, one of them has one insanity, <clears throat> but for the most part, everybody has zero. And it's because these survivors actually have not been in a fight yet. Um, my A team got wiped out against a level two screaming antelope right before this fight. So this is going to be interesting. We have lots of good gear here or lots of pretty good gear here. Uh, but they're all zero experience as far as fighting goes. So we'll see what happens. So Ellen, this is going to be my long range attacker here. We've got the cat or claw head arrow, which, uh, basically it's a one shot weapon, one speed six plus accuracy six strength um it also has slow which, uh, which means it can't ever be more than one speed and let's see what uh if you hit the monster so just hit the monster if you hit the monster it gains one minus one evasion token and i can use that once per showdown then we have Lucky Charm, which is activated with the two um, affinities, the two blue affinities, so plus one luck there. The Whisker Harp may not, I can't remember if the Manhunter has moods. The Whisker Harp has been very uh, useful previously against white, the White Lion and the uh, Antelope. On arrival, all survivors gain plus one survival, so that's good at least. And then Strum, roll, uh, roll 1d10 on a result of 6 plus, discard one mood currently in play. Now, actually, I just realized I did not add that plus one survival. So let me do that real quick. So Dual is actually going to have six survival. Kyle will have six. Uh, Ellen, is, seven is my survival limit. So Ellen's already maxed out there. So nothing there. And there we go. All right. So now everybody's good to go. So like I said, Ellen has seven survival, zero insanity. Um, oh, moving on, we've got the Screaming Horns. Okay, so that's three armor from them. And it has the ability, uh, use an action to scream. Non-deaf, insane survivors gain plus one movement until the end of the round. All other survivors gain plus one insanity. Uh, then she's got the cloth, which is the starting gear for her waist armor. And then the cat gut bow. Two speed, seven plus accuracy, three strength. It's cumbersome, so she has to use her movement and her action to use it. And uh, it does have the ability to 
aim, which is where uh, when I, when she attacks before rolling it, you may reduce the speed of this weapon by one to gain plus two accuracy to that attack. She also has the Sun Eater Fighting Art. Your body mysteriously absorbs light. At the start of the showdown, gain survival up to the uh, settlement survival limit. If you have any plus one strength tokens, you may spend all of them uh, to perform the surge survival action following all of its normal rules and restrictions, which is good because I don't actually have a surge yet. Uh, then disorders, she's overprotective. When an adjacent survivor is knocked down, she is knocked down uh, as she rushes to their aid. Abilities and impairments, uh, neither of these are really, not, neither of these really matter for, for this fight, so don't worry about that. And then moving on to the blue survivor is Gata. Seven survival, um, one insanity. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, I forgot. Um, Ellen's attributes, one accuracy, one strength, one evasion, and one luck. And she has four head armor, one armor on the arms, body, and legs, and two on the waist. And uh, by the way, if y'all are wondering is if it seems like there is some additional armor going on here with these people, that's because we had the murder settlement event occur. And because of the result of that, everybody ended up with one extra armor on all parts of their body. All right, so moving on to Gaeta. Uh, again, the blue survivor, he has the rawhide um, armor set as well, so we won't go through that. Also has the lion headdress. All right, this is an accessory, gives one additional armor to the head, basically. And accessories are something you can wear in addition to any other armor on that spot. He also has the bone club. This is a two speed, six plus accuracy, five strength weapon, but it's cumbersome. So he has to use movement and uh, action at the same time to use it. Uh, it's also two handed. So if he gets his arm chopped off, he can't use it anymore. And he's carrying the stone noses, which provide plus one survival and plus one insanity uh, on arrival at the showdown. Let's see. He has three armor for the arms, body, waist, and legs, and four armor on the head, one strength and two evasion. And he is the Abyssal Sadist that we were talking about earlier in the intro. Uh, the first time you wound the monster each attack, gain plus one survival and plus one insanity. Ignore the effects of the fear of the dark and the prey disorders. So ignore the effects of the fear of the dark and prey disorders. Also, the Manhunter has four traits that he starts the game with. We've got Short Stride. At the beginning of the monster's turn, move the Manhunter three spaces towards the closest threat and turn to face it. If the Manhunter is adjacent to any threats, perform Tombstone. Now, Tombstone is pretty brutal. Attack all adjacent threats in facing. One speed, four plus accuracy, three damage. After damage, bash, target is knocked down. Then we've got Gritty Armament. At the start of the showdown, remove all Mangled Groin, Stake, and Man Trap cards from the Hit Locations deck. If the Manhunter is level 3+, plus, then we'd add the four Stake Locations back, Stake Hit Locations back. And if the Manhunter is level 4+, plus, we'd add the, um, the, man, the three Man Trap Hit Locations to the Hit Location deck. So fortunately, this the Gritty Armament is actually uh, sort of helpful at the moment because... We're taking some stuff out of there that looks like it might be pretty nasty. And then we've got gun action. Uh, target is doomed. Turn to face the target. If the target is not in field of view, perform impatience. We'll check out impatience here in a second. This is a ranged attack. One speed, two plus accuracy, two damage. The blast leaves a painful ring in the ears. All non-deaf survivors within four spaces of the Manhunter suffer monster level brain damage. All right, and the Manhunter... Uh, impatience is his instinct. The Manhunter fires around in the air, making a deafening boom. All non-deaf survivors suffer monster level brain damage in the monster's turn. And then the basic action for the Manhunter is pick target, survivor with the most bleeding tokens in range, closest survivor, no target, impatience. Uh, and then the, uh, the actual basic action is three speed, two plus accuracy, and two damage. So there you go. That is the setup for the Manhunter. Be sure to come back. I'll have the entire showdown in one video coming up in just a little bit. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a, a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. If you want more Kingdom Death, I have a showdown for lots of different monsters at this point. Uh, Gorm, the the Phoenix, the White Lion. I think the White Lion is like a level, do a level three, either level two or level three White Lion. The Giga Lion's on here. The 
um, the line of sorrow, lots of different stuff available. So be sure to check that out. And until next time, if you're bored online, bored offline. Mm -hmm.